how do we create conditions for private sector job growth? And I think a lot of what we're talking about today is things that we have to do in the state, much more so than what the federal mm -hmm. government can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, and, and the funny thing is the state is so rich with that talent coming out of the universities, mm -hmm. um, but it seems to dissipate as quickly as they graduate, they're out of here, and um, the skill sets that are here locally aren't with the latest and greatest technologies. So yeah. not only we're recruiting folks from them to relocate, Total Avalanche adds a lot more time in the hiring process and a lot more expense yep. in the hiring process. So, I mean, just I, I think anyone who's ever tried to connect with universities, I, it screams for just a single portal where the universities and the internship programs and the graduating classes could be made accessible through a single portal. All businesses are too busy to go and chase eight or nine different career services groups who all have different models and different programs that the state could unify, yeah. what those programs look like and make it accessible, that would be a great benefit. Yeah, yeah I guess um, one of our biggest problems, that we're also a social venture nonprofit, um, one of our big problems has been credit support, even before the credit crisis. Um, also, in terms of the um, <coughs> consistency with the um, government programs, we really have, um, you know, we had a contract with the state that the state decided not to, to follow through on that. It was huge uh, detriment to us. The businesses in Rhode Island and the, the, the demand generators from the business travel segment for across the board um, is not you know, causing demand to come into the city. I mean, there's more salesmen coming to visit you because you're not growing. Uh, and so the better the economic health of the businesses of Providence and, and the surrounding areas are, the better the support uh, businesses will, will do. I think people are scared. Uh, I think people aren't sec secure as to what's happening. People aren't growing. Um, you know, as people grow, as your businesses grow and people change, you know, you, you may have a penis that's going to come in and visit you. Maybe he needs to spend the night. Um, but as her business doesn't grow, he doesn't need to spend the night. Um, we've got seven staff, uh, two full time staff, two folks, um, four part time, uh, no, sorry, three part time, and then um, two kind of independent contractors. And, um, you know, given our rate of growth and I think interest in the kind of work that we do um, in the next few years, some of those part time positions do need to become full time positions. Um, but in my kind of financial planning, um, my biggest fear um, in scaling up, moving those part time folks to full time folks isn't even so much actually the salary, because moving someone from 20 to 30 to 40 hours. You know, from a salary hit, actually feels kind of manageable. What scares me more is um, the healthcare costs and the benefits. Yeah. Um, the we have a pretty be we have a pretty yeah. generous uh, benefits package, um, which I think is important. But um, but moving someone to a full time salary professional status, which I think we really need to do, need to do to keep up with the demand and growth from our young people, um, the benefits thing really um, you know really frightens me. And I think a lot of Providence's character as um, the creative capital comes from a lot of really interesting grassroots small community nonprofits like ours. But at the same time, we're kind of hampered by um, the access to the kind of benefits package that we're able to. So, um, you know, I was reading in that, that uh, Bloomberg in New York City was doing a lot of work around um, organizing nonprofits to access group purchasing power um, and maybe even getting access to better benefits plans that, you know, we as a seven person shop can't, but maybe a coalition of nonprofits in the city can get access to. Because um, the wages thing is definitely a big impediment, but actually it's, it's, it's the added healthcare costs um, that, that actually frighten me. And it doesn't look like, you know, as, much, as happy am, as I am about the, the healthcare bill that's passed. Um, it doesn't really seem to affect, you know, we're already providing a pretty decent health care package yeah. and, and paying a decent chunk for it. I also think that people in small businesses um, are holding their breath to see what the state does, because there's only so much we can do right now. I mean, you hold your breath, you, you do what you can do to pay your bills and kind of go, what are they going to do now? And after that, then I can make a decision, because I really kind of have to wait and see what happens, because it affects every, certainly in... What I do affects it every day. You know, people are going to go out and spend anything on it, they might not. So I, we really do have to kind of sit back and hold our breath to a certain extent. Say what we can say and then see what comes of it. And that's scary because it makes it completely out of our control. And that's really scary. You keep asking me to pay, but I have no control over it. This is the first time anybody's ever, I've actually been able to say anything about it. And it's interesting that somebody actually asked me. Well. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to thank Lori again for facilitating. Sort of thank all of you. Everyone around the table is incredibly busy, but this was really valuable, and um, I'm going to make sure that we put together a really good report and get it out to everyone and to get this feedback to the president and to the administration. I really appreciate it. Lori, I'm very proud of us. I think um, we're lucky to have you in the helm, and uh, we're fortunate that um, the president chose to be a covenant to cite one of these important focus groups. And he did a great job uh, assembling a great team really thoughtful and interesting and provocative thing to say to take two hours.
Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.